Clean beauty companies say that they don't use chemical preservatives. Well, because chemicals are bad. You are a chemical care and everything is a chemical. Aloha everyone and welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and to the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. So if you've been in the skincare community over the last year, you will have known that a certain term has come up, been really popular. It's the term clean beauty. Now when I first started into skincare, clean beauty was basically what you would find at farmer's markets. Like it was not very popular, maybe Whole Foods on a good day. But now the term clean beauty has become huge. I mean, Sephora has their own clean by Sephora labeling that you can find on their products to determine which products are and aren't clean. There's online clean beauty shopping centers, clean beauty store locations, all these brands that are claiming to be clean. But a lot of people aren't actually talking about what the term clean means. I've had so many comments and clients approach me in the past saying, I only shop for clean beauty. And I'm like, what does that mean? I don't really get what you're getting at. And with the rising popularity of clean beauty, it has caused some confusion as to what the actual definition means. Simultaneously, we have seen dermatologists and chemists actively fight against the clean beauty movement that's becoming so popular and giving a bunch of reasons as to why it's no good. And it's almost like a mini cold war has started between the two communities. Now, if you aren't familiar with what clean beauty is, it's essentially delivering beauty products that are formulated without certain ingredients. And every individual brand's definition of clean is different because every brand has a different set of ingredients that they choose to not formulate with. In addition to this, a lot of clean beauty companies focus on all natural ingredients, sustainable packaging, natural extracts, and just an overall more earthy green vibes type of feel. Now for the past few months, I have definitely seen quite a conflict start between the two different communities. And I'm just sitting back here eating my popcorn like fight, fight. No, I'm kidding. But I've actually seen a lot of you guys requesting to see what my personal opinion on clean beauty is. And over the past few months, I've really been able to hyper analyze on both sides of the argument and really figure out where I stand. Which is why in this video, I'm going to be delving into the topic and highlighting the strengths and the weaknesses of both sides, because I definitely think there's some points to be made for each side. It's a touchy, complicated, and controversial topic, which means I have to talk about it, of course, because I'm just that type of hoe. <laughs> so let's get into it. The jury presents the case of the scientific community against the clean beauty community. Representing the scientific community, Miss Fax, F-A-X. Representing the clean beauty movement, Ms. All Natural. Miss Fax, you may proceed with your case against clean beauty. Thank you, Your Honor. Here is why the scientific community is right and the clean beauty movement is bullshit. The clean beauty movement vilifies safe ingredients. Anytime you talk to someone from the clean beauty movement, they will talk about how this ingredient and that ingredient and this ingredient are all toxic, carcinogenic, cancer-causing, horrific ingredients that are going to kill you, which is just not true. For example, parabens. Parabens are typically left out of every clean beauty brand for their possible cancer-causing effects. But in reality, there has been no accurate scientific studies showing that parabens are in any way dangerous for your health when used in cosmetic products. But they found that parabens at a concentration of 100% were toxic to human health. It causes cancer. Um, okay, wrong. First of all, it is highly unlikely that you will ever in your lifetime be exposed to that high of a concentration of parabens. And second of all, most things around us at concentrations of 100% would be deadly to humans. Ever tried breathing 100% oxygen? Yeah, bitch, because you'll die. The dosage makes the poison. And the concentrations of parabens in skincare products is so infinitely low that you're more likely to experience side effects from natural ingredients than you are parabens. The same goes for chemical preservatives. A lot of clean beauty companies say that they don't use chemical preservatives. Well, because chemicals are bad. You are a chemical care and everything is a chemical. Most chemical preservatives using skincare products are safe. And finally, ingredients like dimethicone and silicones. There are claims in the clean beauty community saying that silicones are toxic for your health or that they can block pores when there is no scientific evidence showing that. And many of the silicones that are used can be broken down by the body and by the environment, posing no risk to the environmental sustainability of the earth. Number two, while the clean beauty community is vilifying safe ingredients, they are praising the wrong ingredients. A lot of clean beauty companies will use an extremely high concentration of fragrant essential oils. They'll use high concentrations of denatured alcohol, which has been shown, if ingested, to be toxic and deadly. In place of the ingredients and the preservatives that they vilified, they'll use highly irritating preservatives and other ingredients that have been shown to increase sensitivity and skin damage and are far more risky than any of the ingredients that they've vilified. Number three, the scientific community is focused more on skin health. When it comes to skincare, the focus shouldn't be experimentation, rather skin health. And the skincare community relies on data-backed ingredients that have been shown to be beneficial for the skin, rather than experimenting with a high amount of natural extracts that could possibly be good or also bad for the skin. The scientific community plays it much more safe than the clean beauty community does. Number four, the clean community 
drives unsustainable sourcing. There's a common belief that if an ingredient is natural, it's better for the earth and it's better for people. But what a lot of clean beauty companies don't realize is that their demand for natural extracts increases the risk for forced slave labor in communities that create these natural extracts, the depletion of those natural resources in those areas leading to environmental decay, and exhausting those small communities of their resources, inevitably harming them and their workforce. Synthetically made ingredients ensures that there's little to no slave labor, there's no depletion of natural resources, and ensures the sustainability of the products and the ingredients because they're solely made in a lab. Well, I mean, it's obvious, natural is better. Well, where do you think we got the components to make these synthetic ingredients in the lab? Yeah, that's right. Five, the clean beauty community has an unstable marketing strategy. Just because you see clean on a product or a brand does not mean anything. There is no regulation regarding the term clean. There is no expectations for sourcing of certain ingredients for environmental sustainability or the quality or grade of the ingredients used. And more often times than not, it's just a marketing strategy used to create a false sense of comfort. And along with this comes trigger words that the community uses to hook people onto the movement. So your honor, if you see any products that say chemical free, synthetic fragrance free, non-toxic, all natural. More often times than not, these terms reflect little to nothing about the actual formula, as each of these products and brands still could be using highly irritating and damaging ingredients for the skin. I rest my case, your honor. Okay, Miss Facts, move aside, it's my turn. I swear to God, if I had my crystals on me, I would send some major needed positive energy your way, Miss Negative Nancy. Hi, Your Honor. Now after that presentation, I know I may look bad and some of those things may be true, but I have a defense. Let me explain why the clean beauty movement is a good thing. First of all, it encourages people to look through their ingredient lists. Before I knew about clean beauty, I never thought to ever look through ingredient lists and figure out which ingredients were actives and non-actives, which ingredients were necessary to the formula and which weren't. I didn't even realize that some ingredients could be irritating to the face. But once I started learning about clean beauty and the mindfulness that it encourages when looking through ingredient lists, that's that's when I started to become more knowledgeable about skincare. And while you may say that all clean beauty brands give you a false sense of hope, I recommend looking for brands that encourage you to look at the ingredient lists. Clean beauty brands like Versed, The Body Shop, Biosance, Youth to the People, Skin Fix, First Aid Beauty, they're all example of companies that have the clean beauty mindfulness, but also encourage their customers to actively look through their ingredient lists so that they can understand and make their own decisions from there. And isn't it a good thing that we're pushing customers to look at their ingredient list so that we can hold brands accountable to make sure that they're only using the best of the best ingredients? As for terms like all natural, which yes, I will admit is a marketing term, the clean beauty community is becoming saturated and soon enough people will become desensitized to the term similar to the food industry where the term natural on products no longer has the power in swaying customers to buy it as much as it used to. People will start to ignore those trigger terms and focus more so on the actual ingredients in the product. Second, the clean beauty community started the conversation around environmental sustainability. Before clean beauty started to become a thing, I saw little to no company actually talking about the importance of sustainable packaging, ethical ingredient sourcing, partnering with nonprofit organizations, working to solve environmental problems. There just wasn't a conversation there. But once the clean beauty movement started, started seeing options on the market for recyclable packaging, reusable packaging, alternative plastics like hemp, for certified packaging, soy-based ink, the list could go on and on and on. And over here in the scientific skincare community, I never see any brands actively taking steps to ensure that they are environmentally sustainable. Well, no, we're more focused on skin health than we are the health of the earth. And on that note, clean beauty brands are paving the way for transparency about ingredient sourcing. For example, The Body Shop, nearly every single one of their ingredients that they use, they have an entire page on their website dedicated to talking about the way that they harvest that ingredient, what type of labor is used, how they're treating their workers ethically, what steps they're taking to make sure that they don't deplete those resources. Or a company like Biosance that saw that the ingredient squalane was being sourced from sharks and decided to find an alternative way of sourcing that ingredient and replicating it in a lab so that there's a balance of natural resources used. I mean, you can't lump all clean beauty brands together. The reason the movement started is to talk about ingredients, which ones are best for the skin, how environmentally sustainable our solutions are. And I think the scientific community could take a note or two. Thank you, Your Honor. I am sorry to everyone who's lactose intolerant out there because that was a buttload of cheesiness. But overall, those are my thoughts on the clean beauty movement. While I do side with a lot of the points that the scientific community does make, I do think we need to adopt the ingredient and social mindset that the clean beauty community provides. Now that all my points have been made though, I need to say something. I have noticed a trend in the skincare community over the last year where people use their personal beliefs or opinions when it comes to skincare to attack someone else and people thinking they're superior to other people simply because of their skincare opinions. Stop, Stop it. it. 
get some help. And I've seen this play out a lot in this debate where clean beauty people think that they're better than everyone else because they have the best, most natural, high quality ingredients and are actually taking care of the world while the scientific community severely goes after anyone that says anything that doesn't directly align with a published scientific study. And here's the thing, I am the princess of different skincare opinions, but does that mean I go out attacking people and thinking that I'm better than other people because of them? Fuck no. And that's one thing that needs to change. I was recently a part of the Clean Beauty Academy with Biosance. It was an incredible opportunity where I was able to meet the founders of so many different clean beauty brands and be able to have a conversation with them regarding our personal opinions when it came to skincare and what we can each do to ensure the environmental and social responsibility of skincare brands. If you guys wanna see the videos I was featured in, go to the link in the description box below. I'll include them there. But it was an amazing opportunity because I was able to be in the same room as a bunch of these industry leaders that were really paving the way for clean beauty. And you guys know me, I disagree with a lot of what clean beauty represents. I hate fragrance, I hate essential oils, which are very common in clean beauty products. I believe there's a lot of pseudoscience, but I set that aside in order to have a productive conversation with them to see how we could have a midpoint and work alongside each other to ensure that the entire industry is being as responsible as possible. And I think the industry needs to do that. We get so caught up in fighting back and forth whether clean beauty or science is better, attacking each other, shooting each other down, disrespecting each other, rather than sharing the opinions, sharing the beliefs, there's ways that we can be productive and closed-mindedness on either side is going to do absolutely nothing for us and only hinder the growth that the industry actually makes. And I see that every single day and I'm so sick of it. Like Jesus Christ, people, it is just skincare. It's not that big of a deal. And this is why in the future, I will continue to be a part of conversations about clean beauty in order to establish some unity so that we can accomplish similar goals. Whew, that is my two cents. What do you guys think? I know this is gonna be a hot topic and I would love to hear your opinions below. Do you side more on the clean beauty side? Do you side more on the scientific community side? I would love to hear all of your opinions so long as it is kept respectful. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.